Good morning. My name is Mike Silberg, and I thank you for joining us this morning. Um, coming from Columbus, Ohio this morning, and it's a little chilly here. We're going to talk this morning about blessings and cursings. But before we do that, we're going to start with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings you give us every day. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Blessings and also cursings. But you can use curses to bless us as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to read this verse from Deuteronomy. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have placed before you life and death, good and evil, the blessing and the curse. Now we've all experienced something really bad or witnessed something terrible on TV or whatever, and we thought, why would God allow this? You know, what? how can there even, some people even go to the conclusion, how can there even be a, a God if something like this happens? So where do bad things originate? When Adam and Eve listened to the serpent, a curse entered into the earth. We're going to talk about the curse right now. And this is where it started. Then the Lord God said to Adam, Because you have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat from it, cursed is the ground because of you. Because of you. It's what Adam did. This is not something that God meant to happen. It's because of Adam's actions. There's consequences. With hard labor you shall eat from the earth all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall grow for you until you return to the ground, because from it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. With the spread of mankind, this curse has become a Pandora's box and brought forth all kinds of destructive elements from nature, not just thorns and thistles, but things like tsunamis and hurricanes and tornadoes and volcanoes. Here's another verse. The earth is defiled by its inhabitants, for they violated laws, altered statutes, and broke the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse devours the earth, and those who live on it suffer for their guilt. See, I don't think we understand who we really are or how great we are. We are created in the image of God. We make a huge impact not only to ourselves and those around us, but to the whole world. You know, both good and evil, uh, both blessings and cursings. Because of our sin, the earth is under a curse. The curse devours the earth. Tornadoes, storms, volcanoes, all this come forth because of the curse. Because we listen to the serpent. And because we did this and continue to do it, Satan and his fallen angels or what some people call demons, are the power behind the curse. The Bible says the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. Now, Anne Graham Lotz, the daughter of Billy Graham, uh, Billy Graham, she made this response to reporters who asked her once, you know, why does God allow, why did God allow 9-11 to take place? Where was he? And this is how she answered. As a nation, we have systematically ignored God's laws and removed him from our classrooms, our government offices, our holidays, and God, being the gentleman that he is, has quietly removed himself. It should not surprise us then when things like 9-11 take place, since God is no longer around to protect us. We've told him to leave. Even still, God uses the curse to punish evil for the good. I'm going to read you the description of a curse that God specifically uses to punish evil. This is from a little vision the prophet Zechariah had. Listen to this. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and there was a flying scroll. And he said to me, what do you see? And I said, I see a flying scroll. Then he said to me, this is the curse that is going forth over the face of the entire land. Everyone who steals will be punished or cursed, according to the, to the writing on one side, and everyone who lies 
will be punished or cursed, according to the writing on the other side. I will make it go forth, declares the Lord. It will enter the house of the thief and the house of the one who lies and swears falsely by my name. It will spend the night within that house and destroy it. Now we see a lot of people who are loose cannons, right? You say something to them and, you know, that they may take offense at and they blow up. You know, we had this happen in our gallery just last week. This lady, and she had four kids with her. You know, she's, she was encroaching, really, on private property. And, and uh, Sarah, our manager, just went to her and said, Hey, you know, this is private property. Please, you know, please stay on the other side of this. And she blew up. You know, Sarah wasn't yelling at her. She said, Are you yelling? At, you know, there's a lot of people out there like that. And I, I, it's my opinion that there's a lot of people that um, live at home alone. Or, you know, maybe they have kids, but they don't have another adult maybe to share things with. You know, so, you know, like Liam and I, when we got something on our mind, we vent. You know, we, we hash it out with one another. So when we go back, we have a plan. You know, we can deal with it. You know, it's like this. I heard this story once about a guy who um, got saved in prison. And he said one of the things that he was saved, one of the things that got his attention was when he was being arrested. He was stealing a car. And uh, the sheriff was able to pin him, you know, with his car, so he couldn't get anywhere, and he arrested him. He put him in the back of his, uh, of his vehicle, the sheriff's vehicle, and he's driving him to, you know, to jail. And he said to the guy, you know, you need to get yourself right with Jesus. You need to get Jesus into your life, or you're going to end up in worse place than this. And this stuck in this guy's head, you know, even though... This curse, you know, can go into the homes, into the lives of people who steal or people who lie, you know. We can deal with it. You know, some people, we can pray. This is what Jesus said. This is where I'm, I'm going with this. Jesus said, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. And say all kinds of evil things about you. Pray for these people. You know, sometimes um, you may have someone coming into your life. And you don't know why they're, they're on you about everything. You, you know, it's obvious they're not really mad at you. There's something else eating at them. Maybe they have a scroll, this, this scroll, this curse that devours their house at home. Maybe when they go home, they have to deal with stuff. You know, they have to deal with anger or violence or, you know, their lives are full of bitterness or, res or resentment or someone at their houses. So they have to deal with this. And... They're probably like that, you know, in everybody's face to everybody else. There's probably nobody that's concerned about them or praying for them. I, you know, I heard a pastor once say this. If God brings someone into your life, you know, that is a curse to you, pray for them. You know, probably no one else is praying for them either. Maybe God brought them into your life specifically that you will reach out and pray for them. Like that sheriff. You know, he reached out to this guy who was taken to jail. He said, give your life to Jesus, man. You know, straighten yourself up or you're going to get in a worse place. You know, people like that, you know, we pray for them. We say, Lord, be with this person. You know, touch their heart. When Jesus healed, uh, this cursing God gives to us can be not only that we could reach out to other people, but it could be to punish, to discipline, or even to teach us something. You know, remember when Jesus healed the ten lepers? You know, they were cursed with leprosy. Only one came back to thank him. The other nine didn't learn the lesson from the curse that was in their life, that they should have. When Jesus saw the man cursed with blindness, he didn't heal him right away, but he said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And you know, when I first read that, I was thinking, Well, Jesus, come on. it's obvious he wants you to heal him. He can't see. Well, maybe Jesus was looking deeper. Maybe Jesus was realizing that he needed to be healed spiritually, to have his eyes open spiritually rather than just naturally. And then there was the man who was cursed with paralysis. He was paralyzed. And, you know, his friends brought him through the roof down to Jesus. Jesus didn't heal him right away either. He said, your sins are forgiven. You know, Jesus realized that dealing with his sin was more important than him being delivered from his paralysis. Maybe the curses that come upon us are actually being used by God to get our attention, that we might draw closer to him. You know, when God brought the nation of Israel out of Egypt into the promised land, 
One of the first things he had them do is to go stand between two mountains. One was called Mount Gerizim. The other is called Mount Evil. And he had them recite a series of blessings from Mount Gerizim and a series of curses from Mount Evil. And this is called the blessing and the curse of the law. Now this is what Jesus did when he came along. This is, I'm quoting from the book of Galatians. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written in the law, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Jesus became a curse. He became the curse of death for us. He became the curse of the law for us by being crucified. Now through Jesus, God will finish this work of dealing with the curse, and he will finally remove the curse we are all under. And guess what he's going to do then? He's going to throw a party, okay? Now, that's all, all that I've been talking about up until now is the curse. This, we're starting to talk about the blessing. Listen to this. This is from Isaiah 25. Now the Lord of hosts will prepare a lavish banquet for all people, a banquet of refined, aged wine, and choice pieces of meat with marrow. And on this mountain he will destroy the covering, or the curse, which is over all the people. He will destroy the veil, or the curse, which is stretched over all nations. He will swallow up the curse of death for all time, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. There will be no longer any curse. There will only be blessings. I will make them, and here's another verse, I will make them and the places around my hill a blessing, and I will make showers fall on their season. They will be showers of blessing. And will, and will come about that just as you were a curse among the nations, so I will save you that you may become a blessing. And listen to this, the wolf will dwell with the lamb and the young lion together, and a little boy will lead them. The nursing child will play by the hole of the cobra and put his hand on the viper's den. They will not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Now this is one of the last verses in the Bible. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God is among the people, and he will dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will no longer be any death, there will no longer be any mourning, or crying, or pain. There will no longer be any earthquakes, any tsunamis, any volcanoes, or floods, or hurricanes, or tornadoes. There will no longer be any curse, for the old things have passed away. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.